Hello, this is your friendly neighborhood manatee, and today we are going to be going on an amazing adventure with Apple Script. So, this series of tutorials is going to be for Mac users only. I'm sorry, Windows users, but if you want, you can try and get this working on your Windows machine, but, uh, you know, it's going to be very frustrating and you're going to spend a lot of time, and, you know, it's, I don't think there's a way to do that, but if you feel like, you know, we can project something, have fun with that. But anyways, let's begin. So AppleScript is a scripting language for Mac OS X. It's pretty much the equivalent to Windows batch programming. It's very simple and very easy to learn, so if this is your first time really kind of programming anything, this is going to be a great place to start. But it's also very powerful. So pretty much, if you have Mac OS X, you already have everything you need to get started. So there are two ways you can get started and open up your AppleScript editor. The first way is going to Spotlight. I'm typing in Apple Script or something like that, and you'll see down here you have Apple Script Editor. Or you can go to your Launchpad, just open this up. Now I have developer tools and all these things laid out in neat folders, so Apple Script Editor will appear here. Originally, it should appear in Ether, I think, but I decided to move it over here just because of OCD. So we're just going to open this up and maximize this. So this is where you're going to be writing all of your Apple Script code. So just a little bit of uh, introduction to syntax of AppleScript. It is executed by line by line, so there's commands like say, then um, arguments here, what if you want, do x, do y. It'll be interpreted line by line, so pretty much one command on one line, then it'll go to the next line. So it can't just do say, argument, and then do, or something like that. Now it's not going to work. So now we got that out of the way, let's get to our actual programming. So the very first thing I want to talk about is comments. Comments are just, you know, little things you can put in your code that are your, for your eyes only. They can make your code more readable. Um, AppScript is going to ignore them, so pretty much you can just explain your code in plain English. So to make a comment, do slash slash for a single line comment, and this is a comment or whatever you want to write. Or if you want a multi-line comment, you can do opening parenthesis star this is a multi-line comment and star in closing parenthesis so app script is going to ignore everything in here so if your program is getting very big you can explain certain parts in these comments or if you know you've been away from your program for a couple of weeks you come back and you're just like what the heck is this you can you know take a quick look and get the feel for your program so now the comments out of the way let's get to Turning an output to the user. Yeah, that's right. So there's a lot of different ways to return stuff to the user, but the first thing that's probably the most simplest is the beep command. So this pretty much just outputs some sound to your user, so it's do beep. And then we can pass in an argument for the number of times we want the computer to beep. So I'm just gonna put in three right here. So now that we have our very simple program made, there are two options we can do. Or well you utilize. So we can compile our program. So now, as you can see, once our program is compiled, we see beep has changed to a color of blue instead of purple, and three has changed from purple to black. So when we compile our program, AppScript highlights, you know, different keywords, strings, and numbers like that. So it highlights our keyword function, whatever you want to call it, beep blue, and then our number three just in black. So we've compiled successfully. There are no errors. So we can just run this, and I'm going to show up and let you hear what this program does. So you should have heard that there was three beeps. Now, quick thing about compiling and running. If you have made edits to your program, you just hit run. Your program will be compiled and just run automatically, you know, save a couple milliseconds. But you can do whatever you want to do. It's your program. So let's get rid of this. And now another great way to return information to the user is by the say command. So this will just process words and now put it using I think voiceover or a function like voiceover so I'm just going to write this and let you hear for yourselves what it does so first off we'll write say then space then two double quotation marks inside of these is the argument that we want to pass so our words that we want spoken so I'm just gonna write hello world exclamation points so now we can just run this I'm going to let you hear what this says hello world so you can hear that the audio has been passed out. Now we can write whatever you want in here. So there are many different voices to choose from, and 
To take a different voice than the default, you'll type a space after the say command and then your string you've passed through. And then using space, double quotation marks. And then in here is the voice that you want to put. So, uh, there's a lot of different voices, and I'm going to leave a list down below with all different ones you can pass through, or most of them. I'll try and get as many as I can. But for now, I'm just going to use Victoria as an example. So, Victoria. Now, I'm just going to run this. Hello, world. And as you can hear, we have a more feminine voice. So, there's a lot of different voices, and you can experiment on your own. So, we can just get rid of this now. And finally, a great way to just return information to your user is the alert command. So to do this, we're just going to display alert and then space. And here's what we want to have appear in our alert box. It'll appear in the middle of the screen right about here. So display alert. This is an alert exclamation point. Now we're just going to run. As you can see, we have an alert box up here that's popped up with the text we've written in here. So we just hit OK. So that's how you pass information out to your user. So another quick thing I think I should mention is Apple Script is not case sensitive. So that means you can just write something like display alert alert. This will run exactly the same as if this was all in lower case. So we're going to run. As you can see, it's ran completely the same. So, pretty much, um, I suggest, oh, well, as you can see, as it compiles, it changes it to lowercase. So, you know, you can write whatever you want. It's going to change it to lowercase once you finish. But, you know, if you're a program, do what you want with it. So, now I'm just going to do a quick recap in case you forgot something the last couple of minutes. So, you can beep to the computer and output a few, um, sounds to the computer. Beep, and then the number comes one beep. You can say... You can output actual audio by doing the say, this is some audio, run. This is some audio. Or you see using a specific voice, so, Victoria. This is some audio. And finally, you can alert stuff out to your user in the alert box. That should be display alert. Get over there. Display this is an alert. Excellent. Perfect grammar. So there we go. So that's pretty much everything for today, guys. Um, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.